Joining us now is Dr. Paul Beck, our extension beef cattle specialist, to talk about some of the changes in implants for cattle that have happened over the summer. Paul, why don't we just start with an overview of what's been going on? Well, the FDA, uh, who exercises uh, authority over the use of uh, pharmaceuticals in, in, in uh, animal production, uh, they've decided to take a look at our, our labels for growth promoting implants and they've decided that uh, any implants that don't have a clearance specifically mentioning uh, reimplantation or reimplanting within a stage of production, uh, they will no longer allow that to happen. So talk about the stages of production in terms of implants and kind of what happens. Well, the FDA has defined uh, four different stages of production. Uh, there's a pre-weaning phase, uh, which is the, the calf is still on the cow uh, suckling. There's the stalker phase post-weaning. There's the uh, dry lot phase uh, post-weaning, um, which is a, a fairly minor uh, stage of production. And then there's the uh, growing and finishing cattle in confinement stage of production, which is the major uh, feedlots and, and uh, uh, a large portion of the uh, use of implants goes into that stage of production. The guidance for feedlots in particular with implants is, is having a lot of discussion and questions as a result. What do you want our viewers to know? So within each stage of production, pre-finishing, pre we still have most of the implants available to use. Uh, uh, Pre-weaning um, uh, and stalker phases, we, there's not a lot of re-implanting that's, that's done at those stages of production. In, within the feedlot, within the finishing sector, there's only three implant programs that are labeled uh, to re-implant, uh, and they are from a single company. So a lot of the products that we're used to using in the uh, finishing stage of production uh, are no longer available to us. Uh, and that there's, you know, gonna be a lot of work in this area to get those claims and the, and the labels reopened for these uh, implants. But <clears throat> right now there's, there's just uh, a very limited uh, number of implants that we can use that re-implanting is, is available. And this is something you and the team covered in your most recent cow-calf newsletter, right? Yes, we've been, uh, had a series of articles of this in the in the cow calf corner newsletter, um, and it and in that newsletter we do outline uh, a lot of what FDA is is uh, advising and those stages of production and what implants are available within those stages of production and which ones we can use for reimplanting and growing and finishing stage. And it'll be a topic coming up in the Thursday Ranchers Lunchtime Series, which is very popular and is, is back for another run, right? Yes, uh, we're starting back up our Ranchers Thursday Lunchtime Webinar Series. Um, in the next two weeks, we're going to talk about some parasite resistance that we're starting to see in, in some of our cow herds in Oklahoma. Uh, and then finally, on September 7th, we're going to have Brad Johnson from Texas Tech University. He's a a uh, very highly respected implant specialist uh, in, in their animal science department and he's going to share with us uh, a lot of this guidance and, and a lot of the implications that we're going to see from you know these changes in the implant rules. Great. Well, lots of great topics, great information, and I'm sure there will be more discussions ahead uh, on implants. So yeah. thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Linda. And for a link to the Cow Calf Corner newsletter, as well as to register for that Thursday Ranchers Lunchtime Series, go to sunup.okstate.edu.